and gentlemen, welcome to our fourth day, our fourth video. Uh, this is for Friday, April 7th. Uh, if you need to walk out, is still on, then you're probably watching this video. So uh, I want to start with the bell work I was going to do uh, for this day. The first thing about it is, number one, ask what does this residual plot, so this is a residual plot, not the data, it's the residuals, suggest about the shape and strength of this bivariate data set. Well, first of all, um, well, assuming it's a linear regression. Now, if we use a curve regression to make this, that's a different story. We'll talk about that. But assuming that we made a linear regression, we see it all scattered out, right? So it looks like that whatever regression we made is, is going to work. You know, there's no clear pattern. Uh, by the way, a good reference point, again, zero. That's where the actual line would be. Now, a lot of residual plots will put that little line across. And in examples, I did that yesterday. But you won't always have this. Sometimes they'll just put the number zero and expect you to know that's where it is. So, this might help you see it a little better. You can see, even scatter. Um, as far as the strength, the residuals only up, go up to around two or so, right? And then down to maybe negative two. Not very big residuals, are they? Now, of course, I'd want to know a little context. You know, two can be very big in some cases and very small in others. Yeah, I should say context in this. But they don't seem to be very big, so... Um, and again, most of the residuals are actually a lot closer to zero than that. So we'll say it's probably strong. Yeah, the AP exam would give you context before asking a question like that, and so would any real-life situation. So let's say it's probably strong. Again, look at the context. Unfortunately, I didn't give you one. Um, the shape. And again, so it would be linear because there's no curve pattern here. Again, that assumes that's a linear regression. Because, again, that's all we've been doing so far is linear regression. So based on what you know so far, this would be a linear data set that's fairly strong. Number two, the circle data point has a residual of 2.5. And the x value, right down here, the x value is 10. So if this is the regression equation, you're going to find the value of y hat and y at that point. So first of all, y hat, well, we just use the equation, right? We know x is 10. So, um, actually I'll do this above so you can see it a little better. So y hat would be 0.43 times 10 plus 12. 10 times 0.43 is 4.3 plus 12. That would be 16.3. That's y hat. Also want you to find y. Well, we know the residual is uh, 2.5, right? So positive 2.5 means it's 2.5 more than what we predicted. So 2.5 equals y minus y hat, which is 16.3. Bring that down here. Again, we're going to add. You can either set it up this way algebraically, or like I just said a minute ago, you could just say, hey, it's 2.5 more than expected. Well, that means adding as well, right? So either way, we'll add 16.3. So that would be 18.8. So the actual y value is 18.8. So for that x equals 10, the actual y is 18.8. But we predicted that y, the y hat, would be 16.3. So again, know the difference between y and y hat. y hat is what the model predicts it will be. y is what it actually is. And we can use that residual to calculate one or both of them. Of course, to calculate y hat, you need the equation as well. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at that for a sec. This is the kind of work you'll be expected to do. Um, one of last year's uh, AP for responses. Very first question, question one. I believe it was part C that had a, uh, a question just like this. I think it gave the residual and it gave, I think it gave y hat and I had to find what y was think. Well, you guys can see that question, uh, hopefully, uh, if we get a chance to review for this test. Now, you'll see it at some point. It's a great question. Uh, you will see it before we take the AP exam. I don't know when, but you will see that question. If you want to look it up, if you're curious, last year's exam, number one, it's publicly available. 
if you want to look at it. Uh, or just ask Josue or Belinda or uh, Ever or Roselli. Who else I have? Leah was my other junior last year. So they'll know. They all took the test. Although I think Ever tried to just block that out of his memory. Bless his heart. Uh, Alright, so that's yesterday. I want to go over that. Make sure you guys are good with that. So my question of the day here is going to be, what is the relationship between the age at which a child begins to speak and the score on the gestural aptitude test? This was from an example we had a little while ago. Here's the actual data set. Now, notice a child. This is not data. This is just a child number. So don't put this in a calculator. We have the age. This is, by the way, age in months. This is not a 15-year-old person who's learning how to talk. No, this is their age in months. And then their aptitude score later on. The reason I'm going to look at this data set is I want to talk about outliers in this data set. The one that sticks out instantly is child number 18. But they don't start speaking until 42 months. They're three and a half years old. Um, I mean, honestly, that, that's a sign that they're probably developmentally delayed. Uh, and, and we can see in their aptitude score, not very good, only a 57. Way lower than a lot of the other kids. So again, child 18, you know, unfortunately, probably some sort of you know, mental retardation going on there based on the age they start speaking, as well as their very, very low score. That's just what the numbers tell us. Let's look at the scatter plot. Because the scatter plot can show us a couple different things. So first we're going to graph the data. I'll show you all the graph in a second. Uh, we're going to find and interpret R squared and R. I was going to have you do it on your own, but obviously that's not going to work. So here's the scatter plot. We see it looks like a negative association. Least squares line, uh, R squared is 0.41. means r is the square root of 0.41, uh, which would be, what does that come up to? I believe it was 0.64. And in fact, uh, I had you guys do this on your own, but uh, what I've come to realize is that this is actually just one of the examples in your notes. If you look back on uh, day two, this was example number, uh, what example was that? Uh, two, example two. So day two. And the reason I'm saying that is because I don't feel like writing them all out again. So, just a little reminder, look back at that example to analyze r and r squared. Long story short, um, also by the way, I should make this negative, right? This is negative 0.64, because it's a negative association as we can see. Um, moderately strong, and, and look at the scatter plot, I would agree with that, right? There's definitely a, a negative pattern there. Uh, but the big thing we want to talk about here is outliers, like I said earlier. So any points that appear to be outliers on the scatter plot and on the residual plot. So let me see. Well, it looks like this one, again, this is our poor mentally retarded child. Starts speaking way later. This one, maybe this one. Again, it's not as extreme as this one, but maybe this one. I'm going to focus on this one because obviously this is the more extreme case. Um, let's look at the residual plot because that's not the only way a point can be an outlier. I'll show you. Where's the residual plot? Here it is. Let's drag that down. Okay, so put that right in the circle. Now notice in the residual plot we see a different story, right? Our poor mentally retarded child, residual wise, really isn't that far off, are they? So they're an outlier in the sense that you know, they're pretty far off from the rest of the data set. But in terms of following the pattern, they're fine. But this child right here, way higher than expected, right? You know, they're far away from the, I mean, they're kind of near the data set, but in terms of, especially on the residual, they're way higher than expected. Their score is over 20 points more than what the regression line suggests it should be. So basically, we have two different kinds of outliers here. One, that's just far away from the rest of the data set. And another one that's more in the data set itself, but its residual is out here. Next thing I want to do is how do these outliers affect the regression line? What would happen if they just disappeared? So we're going to look at the regression line. We're going to look at R squared, which, of course, will give away what's going to happen to R as well. So R squared is 
0.41, right? 41%. This outlier right here. If we got rid of them. Uh, where is, you know, I'll just put it this way. I shouldn't. Yeah, let's delete this case. Well, let's take a look through the regression line. How it changed, right? First of all, we can see our square had changed quite a bit. It went from 0.41 to 0.11. So the data set got quite a bit weaker because of that. Now the other thing is, let's look at the slope of the regression line. Here the slope is negative 0.779. Here it's negative 1.13. So this outlier, so with and without, so it's 0.41 to 0.11, and the slope uh, goes from negative 1.13 and without it, it becomes, what the hell does this thing become? Oh, I have to delete the point and find out. Huh. Yeah. Let's see. Delete the case. So it goes to negative 0.77. So we can see one data point substantially affects both how correlated it is in terms of R squared, which will also reflect how R is going to change. Uh, as well as the slope. The slope changes a lot just from the removal of that one data point. Now let's look at that other outlier. I'm going to put this outlier back in. 0.257. Put it back in there. Now let's look at this child. 17 and 121. So again, with them, uh, same data as before. 0.41 and then the slope is negative 1.13. If we take them out though, let's see what happens. So let's delete them. Go away, child. Uh, but then I gotta do it in here. Here we go. We notice the R squared is becomes uh, put it right here without becomes 0.57. So it actually gets a little stronger, doesn't it? without that point. And the slope becomes negative 1.19. Not much of a change, is it? So this outlier had a big effect on the regression because without it, the regression changes substantially. R squared goes way down, which means R goes way down, and the slope changes by a lot. But this outlier um, wherever that child was, uh, oh, I deleted it. That's why it's not in here anymore. Duh. Um, they actually made the correlation go up, so they didn't hurt the correlation. And the slope basically stayed the same. So there's a distinction I want to make here. Both these points are outliers. But there's also a term called influential points. So an influential point is a special kind of outlier. It's an outlier that influences substantially the regression, particularly the slope of the regression line. So this one is an influential point and an outlier. This one's an outlier, but it's not an influential point. It doesn't have that much influence over what the slope is. Again, it doesn't change that much. This one has a lot of influence on what the slope does. So influential point... It's a specific kind of outlier, and AP loves talking about those. So let's see what we can learn about them. I think it's notes time. Well, our question of the day, are all points created equal? The answer is no, as you just saw. Some outliers affect the data a lot by taking them out. Some outliers don't affect you a whole lot by taking them out. We're going to talk about the difference today. All right, so this is the last of the 5.2 at least that you're going to do at home. There uh, are pages about curve data that we will do when we come back. But this is all you're going to see for now. So, outliers. Points that are far outside the trend of the rest of the data. That should be nothing new to you. You should know what an outlier is by now. So the thing about it is that it has an X or a Y value that is extreme compared to the rest of the data set. So like that mentally retarded child, their X and Y were quite a bit off. 
for the other kid, his Y value was pretty far off, right? Way higher than we thought. But his X value had nothing wrong. His X value was right there with everything else. But he's still an outlier because, again, his Y value is quite different. But influential points, they're a type of outlier that single-handedly changes their regression line when added or when they're removed. So the presence or lack of presence of that point substantially changes the slope of the regression line. So that's really what we want to look at. Look at that slope. How does that slope change? The correlation is probably going to change either way. Um, but does it change the slope? Does it change how we model the entire data set just by itself, that one point? If your one point is strong enough to do that substantially, then it's an influential point. If it only changes it by a little bit, not impressed. So many outliers are influential points, but not all. Many, but all, not all outliers are influential points. And that's the real point I want you to understand. You have outliers, and then a subset of outliers in bivariate data is influential points. And how to find them? Um, so you look at your least square regression line. You compare them before and after the points added. Again, can't emphasize this enough, especially look at that slope. Did the slope change a lot? That one point, it went from, uh, what, 1.1 something all the way down to 0.7 something something. That's a huge drop. But the other one went from 1.13 to 1.19. Not a big change. So compare before and after. Also look at R and R squared. Those will cause them to drastically decrease. Or, well, yeah. They're really going to cause them to decrease. Or, could cause an increase as well, depending on how well it follows the trend. Like that retarded kid, I mean, I shouldn't call him that, that mentally slow child, who I'm sure is lovely no matter what, uh, they were close to the regression line, right? They, they didn't have a residual that was that off, uh, but with them, R squared was 0 0.41, without them it was 0.11. So their presence made R squared increase. The other kid made him decrease, but that one wasn't influential because it didn't change the slope that much. So again, just updating that could cause um, R squared to decrease or increase depending on how close it is to the line. Um, often have an abnormally large residual, but again, not always. Again, not always. I'm going to put that here so you remember. But that one kid who had a large residual, he was an outlier. I guess this is better, this is more true for outliers. Um, but yeah, some influential points will have big residuals too. That, that's a clue. That's an outlier. Now, of course, again, whether or not it's influential, compare the slope before and after. In fact, our example, we'll talk about that. Uh, let me see. Oh, I want to show you this as well. These four data sets, you can see they're very different. But they all have the exact same regression line and the exact same R value. So I think it's neat because these four different data sets give us the exact same uh, regression. But we can see how different they are. This one, nice linear regression. This one, clearly a curve model would be better. But here, this influential point is kind of bringing that slope up, right? We can see it has a very high residual. It's very far from the line. Um, and we can see otherwise, without this point, we'd have a nice linear trend that would have quite a different slope, right? So we can see how this one point influenced the slope. This whole one point brought the slope all the way up here, just by itself. This thing, well, this is a whole other story, right? This one point way out here, in fact, its residual isn't weird this time, but, you know, everyone's at 8 for the x value, except this guy who's over at 18, which causes a line to form, right? So, just different ways that these outliers and these influential points, and both these are influential, by the way, but how these influential points can affect your, uh, your r value and your, um, your slope.
Okay, this one looks good. This one should have been curved. This one should be a different slope. But because of this point, we got this. And then this one, there shouldn't be any association at all. You know, because the x is all the same. But we get a, um, a uh, what's it called? A slope because of this influential point. So I want to show you guys that. Uh, all right. And then the examples. The example, it's only one example, and it's from 2003 AP exam, the alternative version, form B. It is question number one on that exam, and let's look at it. So we have a simple random sample of nine students from a large university. Also, by the way, before we do that, I'll show you guys the other diagram we have. Outlier, but it's not influential because, you know, it, it follows the pattern, right? Doesn't really, the slope doesn't really change, and we can see the residuals not doing anything crazy. Uh, this one is an influential point because you see how the data is trying to go one way, but the line of best fit is quite different because this one influential point. And a little better so you can see it better. But yeah, there's the difference between an outlier and an influential point. Maybe that diagram will help you a little more than the other one. But anyways, um, so we got SRS of nine students from a large university. They reported the number of hours they work and the hours they study, right? So the scatter plot below displays the data that was collected from the nine students. Here we go. Take a look. There's your computer output. So let's continue on the next page. And after point P is removed from, a data, from the data, a second linear regression is performed and a computer output is shown below. So there's two computer outputs, one before and one after. So before, let's look at what we can pull from, from before. So the highlights, we see the, uh, the slope, right? Slope goes with the uh, variable, 0.4919, right? R squared is 47.6%. So slope is 0.4919. Is that right? 0.4919. Yeah, then the R squared is 47.6. So let's compare that with after, because after the slope is. 0 0.1500 and r squared is just 2.5 percent. Really tiny, right? So does point P exercise large influence on the regression line? Again, it's asking about the line, right? The regression line. So what should we be talking about? We should be talking about the slope. The r squared is great and all. This is another indicator that it's influential. But the question is asking about the line. So we're going to say yes. Because it causes the slope of the regression line to change drastically. Notice I did not use the word significantly. Do not use the word significantly unless you're talking about statistical significance. You know, you would have to run some sort of test to see if it's significant. So don't say the word significant. Say drastic or change a lot, something. Um, but yeah, line change drastically with point P, the slope is 0.4919. But without it, the slope is 0.1500. Again, you're clarifying. You're explaining what you mean. You can't just say, oh, what changes the slope of the line to cause drastically? How do you know? Well, because here are the slopes. I'm going to say them right here. I'm comparing them. That is a drastic change. Um, again, since it's talking about the line, focus on the slope. If you want to talk about r squared, I wouldn't just because that's not what the question's asking for. 
Now, if the question did ask for it, sure, you can see the r squared changes drastically as well. Here, it's you know decent, about halfway there. Here, it's practically nothing. All right, and then part B, the researcher who conducted the study discovered a number of hours spent studying reported by a student P was reported incorrectly. The correct data point for the student is represented by the letter Q. So, student P made a mistake when they reported their data. We rerun the data. We're calling them student Q this time. So explain how the least squares regression line for the correlated data would differ from the least squares regression line of the original data. Well, the big difference is the original data was positive, right? We see the slope is positive, and you can see the scatter plot is positive. But we can see here, definitely negative, right? So, the big difference would be, uh, let me see how they phrase it, in the original data, original data set, the slope of the least squares regression line was positive because the scatter plot was positively So we're saying what it was before, it's going to say, it's asking how it would differ, right? So what was it like before? Here was what it was like before. But then the corrected data set, however, the slope. Place with point Q, the correlation appears negative. So with point Q in place, that slope, the, the line would change in the fact that the slope would go from positive to negative. So we can see just how influential that point really was. You know, not only removing it changed the slope a lot, but changing it, you know, just one point from here to here, now the whole correlation looks negative. So in the original data set, the slope of the regression line was positive because the scatter plot was positively correlated. In fact, the data set, the slope would be negative because when we replace point P with point Q, the correlation appears negative. So if we can get behind that, and you can understand that, then you're going to be all right. So this is all the videos I'm having you guys do for now. If this walkout lasts a lot longer, then we'll see what we'll do. We have one more section after this, so we have to finish 5.2 because we have the curve data. And then we have one final section, 5.3, that's about uh, confidence intervals and significance tests of the slope. Because, I mean, these slopes are just, like, from a sample of data, right? So, you know, we'll do what we've been doing before, make a confidence interval, make a significance test uh, about the slope. You know, is there a significant relationship between the variables and so on and so forth? Um, I'd like to do that with you guys, but if I have to make videos of that section, I will. It's honestly not that hard. It's not. Um... And I'll get you guys the problem sets for that if I need to. So stay tuned. Uh, I will keep you guys posted. As soon as I know anything, I will share it with you. In the meantime, again, as always, if you have questions, please ask. Thank you.